Max and Dave Fleischer were cartoonists in the early 1900s and were Walt Disney's biggest rivals. They were always trying to outdo each other, so much so that in 1934, Max Fleischer tried to pitch an animated film to Paramount, but they said no. However, when Snow White was such a smash hit in 1937, Paramount immediately said yes to Max and Gulliver's Travels was born. The film is a loose adaptation of the novel. The sole survivor of a shipwreck named Gulliver washes ashore the land of Littleput. He's greeted by people who are no bigger than his fingers and is treated as a friend. However, before Gulliver arrived, the king of Littleput, King Little, got into a fight with King Bombo and has started a war. What was the fight about? Well, the two have agreed that their children should marry, but they disagree on what song should play at their wedding. Okay, so the plot isn't the greatest, but the original story's plot was just as corny. Plus, look at this animation. The Fleischers did some really impressive stuff with lighting that I've never seen other companies employ. I will say it is kind of jarring to see two different animation styles clash, but the good animation is really good. It's easy just to dismiss this film as a Snow White ripoff, and I don't blame people for doing so. You have a prince and a princess, lots of songs, comedic relief characters, a similar setting, similar animation style, and Pinto Kulvig, the voice of Goofy and Grumpy, doing the voice of the comic relief. Now with all those things said, why am I talking about this? Well, this film has a certain charm to it that's different from the Disney films. The Disney animated films are made to feel timeless. You can watch them at any point and they'll still make sense to any generation. This film feels more like a product of the time. Granted that argument can be made about every movie ever, but here it's a little different. The film is designed to be timeless, but the way characters talk, the way the comedy is layered, and just the songs in general really suggest the 30s. Usually I'd say that's a bad thing, but with this movie, it kind of works. The clash of the two time periods makes it feel like its own unique thing. The things they make timeless are of the period. There's no phonograph records or jazz music. It's the actions of the characters that make it feel more of the time and give it a unique feel that I've never seen in films before. Now, does that mean it's fantastic? No. But I think it's good enough to warrant a watch. I do have to say that the DVD release of this is tricky. I have the alpha video version and it is in really poor quality. But there's a Blu-ray of the film that's restored and I recommend that instead. It's not as breathtaking as some of the Disney films, but I still feel it's enjoyable to watch from time to time. If you're an animation guru, I recommend it. If you're a movie lover, I also recommend it.